We've made an exciting genetic discovery that shows that ash populations are fighting back against ash dieback. This discovery also has implications for Darwin's theory of evolution. Ash dieback is caused by a fungus that is native to East Asia. This fungus moved from East Asia across to Europe and then it began to spread and here it kills our native ash tree, Fraxinus excelsior. The spores land on the leaves of the tree. They grow into the leaf and then down the leaf into the woody tissue. The tree responds by trying to stop the fungus from growing, but this results in the ends of the twigs of the trees dying, hence ash dieback. The leaves fall from the tree and then as they rot on the forest floor, the fungus grows a mushroom-like structure which produces more spores which then go and affect the trees in the following year, enabling the fungus to keep up its attack on the trees year after year after year. And eventually many of them, like the one behind me, succumb and die due to the disease. We think that up to 85% of ash trees are dying due to ash dieback. But there is hope for the future of ash. Before it died, this tree produced pollen and seeds and we have hundreds of small ash trees like this one. And as you can see, apart from a bit of deer browsing, it's quite healthy. We have sequenced the DNA of hundreds of small trees as well as hundreds of adults and shown that on average, the younger trees have a better genetic makeup to be able to resist ash dieback than the adult trees do. And that's because of a very rapid form of evolution, a form of evolution that relies on selection happening at thousands of places across the genome of ash trees at the same time. In the adult generation, there is abundant genetic variation, all of which contributes in a small way to greater resistance to the ash dieback fungus. Perhaps sometimes it's because of a slight change in vessel size, perhaps sometimes a slight increase in thickness of a cell wall, sometimes because they can produce a compound that helps them attack the fungus. And this information is being recombined and reshuffled in the younger generation. The fungus is killing off the younger trees very rapidly that are more susceptible, retaining the trees with beneficial combinations of genes from their parents. And as those survive, they have a higher average resistance to the fungus than the adult generation. This is a really nice illustration of Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. However, this process will ultimately be limited. It's relying on the variation that's already existing in the wood. And once all of that has been exploited, then the rate of evolutionary progress is going to dramatically slow down. And the big question we want to answer is, once evolution does run out of steam, will it have generated a tree that is completely resistant to ash dieback or not? At the moment, we think it will be when they're partially resistant and so we are going to have to step in and do breeding programs ourselves, perhaps bringing in genetic variation from other species of ash from the part of the world that the fungus came from to give it that extra DNA information to help nature complete what it started and develop ash trees which are completely resistant to ash dieback. But meanwhile, these young trees give us hope that the future generation of ash will not be as susceptible to the fungus and that when trees like this grow up, they may become a healthy, adult tree.